We've hit the trail to answer two questions. Is the new Bronco Sport really worthy of the Bronco badge? And how does it function in the real world? To find out, we're putting it to the test alongside that other small SUV with all-terrain pretensions, the Subaru Forester. Let's get on with it. Now this might just be the Bronco Sport and not the full Bronco, but it does have an impressive lineup of hard and software. All wheel drive, as you'd expect, is standard. And then it features what Ford calls its GOAT system. Now, in my opinion, Muhammad Ali was the GOAT, the greatest of all time. But for Ford, it means go over any terrain, which is a pretty ballsy claim for a escape-based SUV. In this, the more hardcore Badlands edition, you get seven different modes, everything from eco to rock crawl. You also get uprated suspension in the Badlands, increased ground clearance with the bigger tires, and a trick system that employs two different clutches at the back to give you a kind of de facto locking rear differential. So we'll get to play with that. And we've chosen a hill that might not look that hardcore on camera, but what it allows us to do is to show the wheel articulation of this and the Forester, and to get a sense of what each vehicle is capable of. So at the moment we've got all the fancy systems off. We're just relying on the grip from the tires and then my immense, let's be right about it, immense talent. Now, one thing this car doesn't have is a low ratio gearbox, which means that you've got to be pretty delicate with the throttle. Now, what we're trying to do is go across this articulation and immediately you can see you're starting to, starting to spin things up. A little bit more momentum. Here we go, a little bit more momentum and up she goes. But to be honest, it's probably not the best if it's your car. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back up the same hill using the same route, but I'm actually going to deploy the goat. So here we go. I'm going to put it into... Oh, do you know what drives me mad is as you turn it right, the screen goes left. Drives me nuts. So we're going to go all the way through to rock crawl. Now what that's done is activate this fancy system at the rear, which allows us to send almost all the torque to either the right or the, the left tire. I'm also gonna put it into manual mode on the gearbox and just lock it into first gear, and then away we go. So we're gonna take the same path. I've got the front camera on, show me the terrain coming up. Let's have a, let's have a go. You can see actually, actually straight away, feel the car doing its work and she just glides up. From a driver's perspective, not as exciting. From a vehicle preservation perspective, really rather good. I have to say, this is quite an impressive toy. So now we're in the Subaru, on the face of it, it's actually quite a lot simpler, but it does have an X mode system and a choice between snow and dirt, or deep snow and mud, or indeed, normal, which are in most of the time. We have a continuously variable transmission, automatic, uh, which also has an additional function, which gives you sort of lower ratio kind of thing. So we're gonna try and do what we did in the Ford, which is take this sort of fairly aggressive line up this hill. And at the moment, all the systems are off. We're just in normal. So into drive, let's give it a whirl. Should also say that Subaru is on far less aggressive tires than the the Ford is. These are all, well, immediately we've got stuck. <laughs> I would call these all season tires, whereas the Ford is very much on all terrain tires. So I'm going to back up a little bit and see if we can't um, give another go. Now, the Subaru, as you expect, does have a reversing camera, but it doesn't have the forward facing camera that the Ford does, that I think is particularly useful. So here we go, a little bit more momentum and. Okay, so we're gonna try and steer our way around this a little bit. There we go, let's get a little bit of momentum. And as you can see, we are struggling. And up we go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it back round, try again using all the X-Drive gizmos use this sort of low ratio tight mode on the gearbox. And let's see if we can't restore a bit of Scooby pride. 
We're going to activate X mode, turn it into deep snow and mud. What that also does is activate a, a little screen at the top here, which gives me some guidance about the angle of the car, both from a, a lateral and a fore and aft, or whatever you call it, perspective. So just try and use a little bit of momentum, nothing too serious. Let's see how we get on. Actually see the car instantly working harder. And that's impressive. That is impressive. Because these tires have nothing like the grip of the Fords. Just shows how clever electronics are getting, hey? This has always been the Scooby sort of trump card, really, in the small SUV class. It might not look like the fiercest of off-roaders and it might not make bold claims with fancy go faster stripes like the Ford, but honestly, both these cars are actually better than I expected. And while I think ultimately the Ford will go a little bit further, this Subaru is definitely not disgraced. In fact, in terms of ground clearance, there's only 0.1 of an inch in it in the Ford's favor. While we cross the trail, why not click subscribe to our channel and remember to turn on notifications for future films like this. And if you're looking for a change, head to edmunds.com slash sellmycar for a cash offer on your current vehicle. The Bronco Sport starts at around $28,000, but this top spec Badlands costs almost $36,000. It's based on the Ford Escape SUV, but has been beefed up both technically and aesthetically to appeal to outdoorsy types, or at least those who like to pretend they're outdoorsy. The Forester's a lot less extrovert in the best Subaru tradition. Rally specials aside, Scoobies have always been bought by people comfortable in their own skin. It's an anti-statement car, but it has the tech to go head to head with the Sport and at just under 34,000 in this limited trim, it's a couple of grand cheaper. Inside, you can really see the Escape influence. It's not nearly as funky as the big Bronco. And in places, it does feel a little bit cheap. I can't remember the last time that I drove a $35,000 car with a hard plastic steering wheel, probably a rental. There's plenty of evidence of cost cutting to make space for all that off-road hardware. The perception of quality is actually better in the Subaru, it all works well, there's no shortage of tech, but it's not going to win any design awards. If you're a Subaru fanboy, you might call it utilitarian chic, but for me, it's just a bit dull. The Bronco Sport does at least try and liven things up with some neat detailing. I love this little zipper pocket here on the seat back, and yes, it will fit an iPad. You get this little webbing here on the, on the back for hanging stuff from. 110 volt power supply for charging something like a laptop and my favorite feature under this passenger seat the sort of cubby for dirty shoes with enough room for my filthy size 11 nikes neat but there is a problem and it's this yes i know i'm six foot four but it really is tight back here a bit tough on the old crotch this forest is also set up for my driving position, and as you can see, there's a load more room. Seriously, if you're thinking about buying one of these vehicles as a family car and you've got teenage kids, well worth thinking about. Cargo space, I hear you say. Well, with both rear seats up, there's very little to choose between them. But with the rear seats folded down, the Subaru has over 10 cubic feet more space. That's a big difference. To be honest, a path like this up to a trailhead is probably the, the type of off-roading that these vehicles will do most of the time. And both of them handle it with complete aplomb. We're in normal mode, all the, the fancy gadgets switched off and cruising along, listening to the, the love channel because as we film, it's almost Valentine's Day. Feeling a bit romantic. Beautiful scenery, sun is shining. Hard to believe we're only about half an hour outside of LA. Honestly though, I could probably get a sedan up here. It's not so tough, this bit. At least I feel a bit tougher in the Bronco. I feel a bit more, you know, alpha, macho, manly. Let's be honest about it. Even if you are a weekend adventurer like the beautiful people on Ford's website, you're still going to spend most of your time on the road. And on the terra firma, the Bronco Sport is all right. 
Don't expect Honda CRV levels of comfort or Mazda CX-5 style driving finesse, but it's still better than more dedicated off-roaders like the Jeep Wrangler. The ride can be a bit choppy and the steering lacks a bit of precision, but we suspect that's exaggerated in the Badlands edition by the off-road focused suspension and tyre setup. Be interesting to drive a standard Bronco Sport. The Forester has a nicer ride quality and steers better too, but it's still no Mazda CX-5. It's also badly let down by its engine. The two and a half litre naturally aspirated boxer unit develops just 182 horsepower and 176 pounds-feet of torque and works with a CVT automatic. By contrast, the Ford's two litre turbo develops 245 horsepower and 277 pounds-feet of torque and works with a more traditional eight-speed automatic that we much prefer. On the road, the Subaru can feel genuinely sluggish, and the difference was confirmed when we took both vehicles to the Edmunds test track. In the hands of our expert test drivers, the Bronco Sport recorded zero to 60 in 7.2 seconds, a full 2.1 seconds faster than the Forester. But at least the Subaru stopped more quickly than the Ford. The Forester needed 120 feet to stop from 60 miles an hour, seven feet less than the Bronco. Anyway, enough with the facts and figures, and I'm now full of caffeine. Let's head back to the trails. But before we do that, I wanted to demonstrate another neat feature of the old Bronco Sport. You have the option here of either opening the whole tailgate or, get this, just the glass. Like that. Even if getting a rucksack out is um, a bit of a challenge. So remember that hill that we came up earlier today? Well, we're now at the top of it looking down and we're gonna test out the car's hill descent control systems or whatever Subaru and Ford actually call them. So in the Scooby-Doo, X mode into uh, deep snow and mud, using the transmission into its little low mode and away we go. Now, one thing that Subaru struggles with relative to Ford, you only have to, to look at them to see is the approach and departure angle. In other words, how much the bodywork's kind of hanging over the front and rear of the, the tires. And that means you're far more likely to, to whack a rock at the front or whack a rock at the rear. And that's particularly pertinent going downhill when sometimes it's actually quite difficult to see what you're doing. I'm actually just gonna use the brakes a little bit to control the speed. You can feel the, the ABS doing its thing. I'm actually working with the hill descent control just because I want to manage the speed because I can see with my human eyes that we have a pretty big obstacle ahead. Feel that articulation, just easing it down. And again, I'm kind of working with the systems, but I am putting in quite a bit of manual input. I think if we just let it do its thing on its own, we'd probably have had too much momentum for those big articulations. But we made it down. Now we shall make it up the other side. Let's swap to the Ford. So jumping into the Ford, I'm into goat mode rock crawl. I'm going to use manual on the gearbox so I lock it down into first, but then I'm going to use what Ford calls trail control. What this effectively is, is a kind of cruise control for off-road work. And I can actually, by using these little set buttons here on the steering wheel, control the speed that I want to go. So I'm going to lock it into the lowest possible speed, that's one. Take my foot off the brake and away we go, very slowly. So immediately you've got more control than you had in, in the Subaru. And if I now, I can turn that up to two or three and actually manage my speed electronically. I also love this front camera, I can see where I am. So now I'm going exceptionally slowly. As you can see, all my feet are off the pedals and down we go, super easy, super controlled. Now, you know, this would be useful if not only if you're doing serious off-road work like this, but also if, you know, if it suddenly snows and you've got to go down a, a tricky descent. That's really impressive. I've also been playing with this system going uphill, and there I like it less. The reason being that sometimes when you look ahead to different terrain, you actually want to use a bit of momentum. So. For me, and I've done obviously quite a bit of off-roading, I tend to use it for the downhills and then control the throttle myself on the, on the uphill sections, but it's kind of a personal preference. But it's really good, really good system. And this is the same system that's now on things like the Ranger Tremor, and we expect it to be rolled out as part of their off-road arsenal. Definitely a win for the Ford.
And so to the conclusion, what have we learned both on and off road? Well, let's start with question one. Is the sport worthy of the Bronco badge? Is Baron Von Bronco really happy? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. Honestly, we've all been super impressed with what this vehicle can do off road, particularly in this Badlands trim. But its ability comes with some compromises, which is a neat segue into question two. Is it a good SUV? We'd be willing to trade a bit of on-road refinement and even a bit of interior quality for that off-road capability, but the lack of rear room and rear leg room in particular should be a big concern for families. The Subaru Forester isn't as cool and isn't as new and that engine's a real letdown, but it arguably offers a better compromise of some off-road ability with on-road refinement and space. So here's what I think. If you want a fun junior off-roader at a pretty accessible price, then buy a Bronco Sport. If you want a comfortable, spacious family SUV, then perhaps go for our top-ranked Honda CRV. And if you want a bit of both, then by all means choose the Subaru Forester. If you enjoyed this film and if you want to see more like it, then subscribe to our channel. And Baron, head to edmunds.com for all your car shopping needs. You won't regret it. There's no horseplay.